welcome. Do make sure you have your yoga toys nearby, maybe a belt, a couple of matching blocks, couch cushion, pillow, folded blanket, whatever. And we're going to start seated on two blocks. So take those two blocks side by side in what I call butt cheek configuration. You got one for each cheek and then sit upon them. And oh heck, why not? Sunday morning, be extra nice to yourself. Go ahead, cover that pedestal with some padding. Every chance you get, put yourself up on a pedestal, why not? And then have a seat on that comfy little platform. And you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of lifting and separating. I'm dividing and conquering. I'm spreading the wealth around. So that as I sit on the front edge, I'm gonna kind of butt walk to the front edge of whatever I'm sitting upon. My thighs angle down in a way. My knees are lower than my hip bones. So hip bones are here, and my knee bones are down there. And then turn your palms forward. Take a great big shoulder shrug. Inhale up, and exhale back, and then down. Keeping your palms turned forward, repeat. Great big shoulder shrug, great big inhale. Exhale back, and down. One more time. Great big shoulder shrug, a great big yawn. Inhaling up, and exhaling back, and down. And then grow your fingertips down towards the ground. And let the sides and the back of your neck get long. And maybe tick tock your head side to side, wiggling your jaw, maybe even yawning. And then come to neutral. With palms turned forward again, shoulder shrug, inhale up. And exhale back and down. Tuck your chin into the notch at the base of your throat. Let the back of your neck get long. Hitchhike your thumbs back behind you. So you're rotating your arms in such a way that you're shining the inside of your arms. The part with no tan is showing forward. And your thumbs are pulling backward. And your chin is tucked into your chest. And you're breathing. You can stay here, lengthening your fingertips down towards the ground, hitchhiking your thumbs backward, rotating your arms to show me the pale skin of your inner arms, chin tucked to your chest. Or if you would like a little bit more intensity, you can take your fingertips to the back corners of your skull, your chin tucked into the notch of the base of your skull. You have a stretch from the base of your skull all the way down in between your shoulder blades. Keep on breathing. And then release your hand, leaving your chin tucked to your chest. Reach behind you, bind your fingertips behind your back, clasp your hands together, press your knuckles down, squeeze your shoulder blades together, still with chin tucked to your chest. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. And do your best to keep on breathing. And then with your next inhale, slowly float your head back on center, looking forward. So you're like a storefront mannequin, all chest, no arms. Your arms are Squeeze together on your back. And from here, try to lift your arms away from your hips in the amount at all. Get a deeper, greater stretch across your heart. Keep on breathing. Can you relax your jaw? Maybe even yawn. Let your shoulders shrug down your back. And then really. Unfortunately, I don't have bones. You really can't see bones on me. But if I pull my shirt out of the way, I can kind of show you where my collarbone would be if I had bones that stuck out. So find your collarbone, pick a side any side. For me, I'm gonna demonstrate the right side. So take your fingertips to the inside corner pocket where the sternum, the breast bone, meets the collarbone. Just go inside that corner pocket palpate, feel with your fingertips for a space between the ribs. So it's below the collarbone, just wide of the sternum, feel for a space between the ribs, a little rib space there. And then push in with your fingertips. You're gonna staple that muscle into that space between the bones. So push in hard with all 10 fingertips. And let your head tip back and away. 
So I've pinned my right chest. I'm letting my head fall back to the left. And for even more stretch, bottom lip goes over top lip as you pout. Can you relax your butt cheeks as you do this? Maybe you relax your toes. And then unpout. Slowly let your head roll around to the front. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So again, I'm not a good model for this one. Find that collarbone. Where the collarbone meets the sternum, we go to the inside corner pocket. Push in with your fingertips, palpate. Feel for that pocket, that rib space, and push your muscles into that spot. And then your head tips back and away. Bottom lip over top lip as you pout. And then slowly come back to neutral. Palms turn forward, great big shoulder shrug, great big mouth, open mouth yawn. Ooh. Hitchhike your shoulders up, back and down. Pull your thumbs back behind you. Once again, clasp your hands together, interlace your fingers, press your knuckles down, stick your head out, jut your chin forward. And then drag your head straight back, make a double chin. Keep dragging your head straight back. And if it's comfortable, let your head fall back. So your head rests on that wrinkle of skin between your shoulder blades. And if that's still going good for you, you take your bottom lip over your top lip and you pout. Just listen. You're still pouting, bottom lip over top lip, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Now find your heart. It's that thing that's sticking out. And lead the way with your heart as you begin to hinge forward, finding that tipping point where your head falls forward. Continue to hinge forward, knuckles pressing up towards the sky. If that's a little too much on your hips, then release the hands. Just put your hands on the floor and control the descent. Some of you have your hands clasped behind your back, knuckles pressing up towards the ceiling. Others have your hands down on the ground, bowing over your crossed legs. And then from here, everybody brings their hands down to the ground and everybody has their head hanging, bowed forward, and everybody walks their hands back towards their lap to sit up. And go ahead, recross, put the other leg in front, put the other shin in front. Palms turn forward, great big shoulder shrug, inhale up. Exhale back and down. I'm gonna mirror image you. So this is your right arm. You can take your right arm up, bend your right elbow, drive that right shoulder blade down your back. The trick, the secret to this one is to get that shoulder blade to slide down your back in tight, close to your spine. If this is your right hand in the air, you're gonna turn your head to the left and tuck your chin into that left armpit. So pulling your right shoulder blade down your back, tucking your chin into your left armpit. You have the option of taking that left hand up and over to the back corners of your skull and tuck your chin deeper into that armpit. The trick to intensifying that stretch is to pull your right shoulder blade down your back. And then release. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So left hand up. Drive that left shoulder blade down your back. Turn to look towards your right armpit. Tip your chin into your right armpit. And maybe take that right hand up and over 
So drag that right, your head into your right armpit a little bit more. Keep drawing that left shoulder blade down your back. And then release. Palms forward, take a great big shoulder shrug, a great big yawn. Inhale up, exhale back and down. Keeping your palms turned forward, inhale, both arms come all the way up. And exhale, drive your elbows and shoulder blades together onto your back. Inhale up. And exhale, drive it down. And one more time, inhale, reach for the sky. And exhale, drive those elbows, shoulder blades down onto your back. Now keep those shoulder blades pinned onto your back and release your hands down towards the floor, depending on how much stuff you're sitting on, how long your arms are, maybe your fingertips touch down, maybe they don't. Whatever you do, inhale, sit tall, and then hinge forward. Hinging forward, you can bring your hands out in front of you to control the descent. Or if you liked that clasped hand version, you can do the clasped hand version. You can clasp your hands behind your back and bow forward. The second time here. And then with hands on the ground, slowly back yourself on up to sit. You're gonna take your feet wide. I sit as ladylike as possible. Do it for the camera. <laughs> I'm sitting on a little bit too much stuff. I feel like I'm going to fall off, so I'm going to remove some of my stuff. But you do you. You make yourself comfortable. Sit wide. You're going to brace your elbows on the insides of your knees and bring your hands together in a prayer position. And then drag your hands down midline. Press the palms completely flat together so you get a little bit of a wrist stretch. Shoulders shrug back and down. You're going to be resting your skull on the tips of your thumbs. So you're going to find the inside corners of your eye between the tear duct and the eyebrow and rest the tips of your thumbs or uh, let your eyes rest on the tips of your thumbs between the tear duct and the eyebrow. So you should be on the eye socket bone, not pushing into your eyeball. Elbows resting on your lap, head resting on your hands, really stimulating the inside corners of the eye socket. Helps to release tension, headache, and eye strain. I've realized I spend so much time looking at my phone and computer and TV. So many hours a day, I'm starting to get headaches. Apparently, you can get a blue light blocking lens, just a clear eyeglass with a blue light blocking eyeglass. It's supposed to help release that, relieve that. All right, so from here, you're going to separate your hands and pinch between first finger and thumb. You're going to pinch along the inside of the eyebrow, pinching the eyebrows between the first finger and thumb. And keep on breathing. Feel for a sore spot. There's usually a sore spot somewhere along the arch of your eyebrow. And then take your fingertips to your temples and massage your temples. Feel your scalp move around on your head. Slack jaw, yawning, massaging at your temples, just letting the weight of your head rest on your fingertips. Shoulders drop away from your ears, the sides and the back of your neck are long. And you're going to work your finger pads into your scalp, just above your ears. Feel your toupee move around on your head. Massage and your temporalis, chewing muscles, just above your ears. And 
and then work your fingertips to the back of your head, the base of your skull. Chin tucks into your chest. Fingertips from the base or the back of your head, base of your skull, the back of your neck. And palpate, that means feel with your fingertips. Press in with your fingertips all along the base of your skull, right at the hairline. And in a moment, you're gonna pick a hand and you're gonna palm the back of your neck, like you're palming a basketball or picking up a cat by the scruff of its neck. And you use the palm of your hand, not your fingertips. So find one of your hands and palm the back of your neck. Give your neck a good hard squeeze. Give yourself a squeeze on the scruff of the neck. And then switch hands, palm using the other hand. Give that neck a good hard squeeze. And then release. All right, shoulders shrug back and down. Sit up nice and tall and bring your feet together. So again, I do recommend sitting on a little something. Sitting on a little something keeps your hips higher than your knees. Your knees are more comfortable. Your knees stay happier. And you also are able to tip your hips in such a way that your belly spills forward. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm kind of lifting and separating, spreading the wealth around. So I can kind of butt walk to the front edge of my blocks, get my pelvis to tip in such a way that my baby is coming onto my feet and my knees are wide. If you feel like you're tipping from side to side, got a couple of couch cushions, hats, blocks, what have you, you can put something underneath your knees to prop them up. Shoulders are up, back and down, chest is lifted and you're gonna bow forward over your feet and use your hands. You can use the heels of your hands, you can use your fingertips, you can use your thumbs, and begin to palm your feet, massage your feet. Let your head hang and breathe. As you massage your feet, get your feet to open up like a book. Keep breathing, keep yawning. Take some nice deep belly breaths. Use those deep belly breaths to pry your thighs apart. Grab a hold of your thumbs and work your feet like joysticks. I say thumbs, grab a hold of your big toes and work your feet like joysticks. Toes, the other big thumbs. Big toes, the other thumbs. And then slowly come all the way up and help your legs together. And take your legs out in front. Spread your toes. Notice that when you spread your toes, your fingers also spread. <laughs> the part of your brain that controls your toes is adjacent to the part of your brain that controls your fingers and sometimes the signals get crossed. You spread your toes, your fingers try to help. Spread your toes and then make foot fists. And then spread your toes. And make foot fists. And spread your toes. And make foot fists. A couple more times, spread your toes. Make foot fists. One more time, spread your toes. And make foot fists. And then you're gonna spread your toes and turn your toes out to the side. You can get in there with your hands and rotate the meat around your thighs so your legs turn out a little bit more. You drag your pinky toes down towards the mat, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, and then bring your legs back to neutral and then turn in. So you might need to separate your feet a little bit. Turn your toes in. So my feet are flexed flat. I'm trying to dive my big toes down towards the mat. And sometimes it helps to rearrange the merchandise as those toes descend down towards the ground. And then switch, turn out, turn the meat out. We're getting those pinky toes down towards the ground. And then turn in, inwardly rotate the legs. And one more time, externally rotate, turn out like a ballerina, get the meat to twist around the bones. And then 
release. Give it a jiggle. All right, we're gonna come up to hands and knees. So blocks, pillows, all your fun toys nearby. I tend to move around on the mat. I'm always orienting myself so that you can get a good view of what's going on. I'm gonna encourage you to orient yourself so you're always looking at the screen. So you don't have to look over your shoulder like I'm doing right now and strain your neck to see what's going on. Just orient yourself so you're looking at the screen. So I turn sideways, I'm gonna recommend you keep looking straight forward. Coming to a kneeling position, put some padding underneath your knees, have your blocks nearby, because from here you're gonna take a giant step forward with your right foot and put a nice long stride between your legs. So notice I'm inching my front foot forward so my toes stick out further than any other point on my body. And I'm driving my hips forward so that my back thigh is releasing down towards the ground. And I'm taking up a lot of space. I've got one foot at the front edge of my mat and the other foot is reaching towards the other end of my mat. I'm going long. Hopefully you are too. Notice I got blocks underneath my hands. Shoulders back and down. Coming into a nice low lunge. Let your hips drop down towards the ground. Now with hands on blocks, you're going to back it up. Start pulling the front leg straight, rock back on the front heel, heel the toes up, and start to waggle the foot side to side. And not only the foot side to side, but your hips also. Hands on blocks, you can control this as you waggle your hips side to side, as you waggle your foot side to side. Feel like a nice stretch on the back side of the leg and in your hips. Now that you know what's going on, go ahead, drop your head. And with your head hanging heavy, again, you're controlling how much weight your back is carrying by supporting yourself blocks on hands. You control how much stretch you get in your back. With your head hanging heavy, bowing over that straight leg, you might start to feel that stretch not only in the back of your legs, but all the way up your spine, maybe to the base of your skull. And then you're gonna to come to neutral. Turn that front foot out to the side. So you're gonna externally rotate. You're gonna drop the pinky toe down towards the mat. My knee's gonna be pointing off to the side. You're gonna bring both hands on the inside arch side of that front foot, maybe wiggle the front foot a little bit wider. And I'm gonna resume the lunge. My toes turned out, my knee turned out blocks underneath my hands, maybe blocks come underneath elbows. As you bow forward, get into this lizard lunge and then drop your head, chin tucked to your chest. Looking towards your chest, lift your chest up so you can look towards your belly, lift your belly up so you can lift that pelvic floor up. So chest is lifted, belly lifted and pelvic floor is lifted as you get low in this lizard lunge. And then slowly start to straighten your arms, back it up, rock back on the front heel. Once again, take those blocks with you, pull the front leg straight. And then ease out, let's switch sides. So left foot forward, I'm gonna measure out a nice long low lunge. Front foot sticking out past the knee. So toes are sticking out past the knee. Back knee on some padding. Enough blocks underneath your hands to be comfortable. Hips are driving forward. Back thigh is at a slant. And then back it up. Rock back on the front heel. Bring the blocks with you. Start to waggle that front foot side to side. Waggle your hips side to side. Let your head hang. You might feel this stretch not only in the back of the leg, but also the back of the hips, the lower back, maybe all the way to the base of your skull, depending on where you feel the tightness. And then take that front foot, turn it out to the side. You're gonna bring both hands on the inside arch side of that front foot. Toes are angled off to the side. And you're gonna resume your lunge, a lizard lunge with your toes turned out. Hands can be on blocks. Maybe your elbows come down to blocks and you get down low in this lizard lunge. Letting your head hang to add a little bit more stretch.
and then hands on the floor, hands on blocks as you back it up. All right. Removing the toys. Hands at the front edge of your mat, toes curled under. Shoulders shrug away from your ears. Exhale, pull your belly in for your cat pose. And then with an inhale, head up, tail up, come into cow. So I'm doing my cat and cow here with my toes curled under. I'm gonna encourage you to do the same. Curl those toes under. As you move back and forth through cat and cow, let your shoulders move away from your ears. Have a nice long neck, waving back and forth, cat and cow. Toes curled under. Then we're gonna get funky with it. Now the next time you exhale, tuck your tail, tuck your chin, walk your hands back towards your lap. You're gonna sit back over your heels and your toes are curled under. Make sure those pinky toes are curled under as well. So all 10 piggies are squealing. You're gonna flare your heels out to the side and you're gonna really sit down on it if you can. Now, if that's too intense, then you can come to kneeling. You can use blocks underneath your hands to stabilize it. Or you could be here praying for it to be over. But whatever you choose to do, orient yourself so you can see the screen. Again, I'm going sideways. I have to look over my shoulder to see the camera. I recommend you do this facing the camera so you don't tweak your neck and just watch what's gonna happen. So you're hanging out here, enjoying your toe stretch, doing your best to keep breathing as I demonstrate what's happening next. In a moment, in a moment, you'll be on hands and knees, and in a moment, we'll do some cat and cow. And in this cat and cow, notice my hands are flat on the ground. I can rotate my arm in such a way that my elbow pits face forward, and I can rotate my arm so my elbow points face forward. I got pits and points and pits and points and pits and points and pits and points. I can rotate my arm without moving my hands. So as I exhale and I come into my cat pose, I'm gonna show you the points of my elbows. My shoulders hyper up along my ears. And as I inhale into cow, the pits of my elbows turn forward. Exhale, show you the points of my elbows, shoulders up by my ears, and inhale into cow, show me the pits of the elbows. All right, I showed you mine, you get to show me yours. So from here, you're gonna untuck your toes. Take a moment to roll your ankles around. Wiggle your toes. You're gonna set up for your cat and cow with your pits and points. So hands beneath your shoulders, knees beneath your hips, toes can be pointed or curled under whatever your toes want to do right now. Begin with an inhale. And as you exhale, show me the points of your elbows. And inhale, show me the pits of your elbows. Exhale, points, shoulders hike up by your ears, and inhale, hips, shoulders move away from your ears. Now, can you do this up on fingertips? You might get a little bit more rotation in the arms if you're up on fingertips. All right, now the next time you exhale, come into that cat pose. And then once again, sit back over your heels. Now you get to stretch your feet the other way while I demonstrate what's gonna happen next. So you can sit back over your heels, peel up one knee, stretch the top side of your foot, peel up the other knee, stretch the other top side of your foot, keep alternating side to side. You keep doing that, keep looking at the screen while I demonstrate what's happening next. In a moment, you'll be on hands and knees. And in a moment, we'll be doing the cat and cow thing. And in a moment, I'm gonna do cat and cow with toes curled under. And in a moment, let me turn sideways a little bit. When you exhale into your cat pose, you're gonna pull your belly in, tuck your tail under. And then when you inhale, come into your cow, press your inner thighs back, let your heels flare open. Big old bottom. And then as you exhale, come into your cat, you're keeping your heels wide, your inner thighs pressing back. It's gonna be a challenge. And then as you inhale, come into your cow once again. Heels wide, sit bones wide, inner thighs pressing back. So let me paint an image for you as if this wasn't enough, okay? Imagine your legs are the beaters on a hand mixer. Like grandma's house, she's making cake with a hand mixer and those beaters are rotating. Let your leg be like the beaters on the hand mixer. They only rotate one way. And they rotate in such a way that the cake batter splatters 
threw your legs back behind you. So it's an inward rotation of the legs. Heels always flare out. Butt cheeks wide apart, especially in your cow and as much as you can in your cat. So please join me. Come on down to hands and knees. Get ready to start your hand mixer. Knees beneath your hips, hands beneath your shoulders, toes curled under just for fun. Again with an inhale. And as you exhale, press your inner thighs back, pull your belly up, come into your cat pose. And then as you inhale, come into your cow. Inner thighs back, heels spread wide, big old bottom for that cow. Exhale, belly pulls in, coming into cat. Try keeping your butt cheeks relaxed. And inhale into cow, big old bottom cow. Inner thighs back and apart, heels wide. One more time, exhale into cat, pulling your belly in. And inhale into cow. Can we put the top half and the bottom half together in the following way? So starting at neutral, toes curled under, maybe up on fingertips. Begin with an inhale. And as you exhale, press your breath out, pull your belly in, elbow pitch, shine forward, belly pulls in tight to your spine. And then as you inhale, come into cow, show me your elbow pits, heels wide, sit bones wide, sway back to cow. Exhale, points, belly lifts, tail tucks to your cat. And inhale, pits, heels wide, sit bones wide. Now keep working it out. Dramatic cat. Dramatic cow. How about once more each way? Exhaling for cat. And inhaling for cow. And then come to neutral. So cat and cow can be a shoulder opener and a hip opener, not just a spinal thing. All right, you're going to step forward with your right foot once again. Notice I don't have a pillow underneath that back knee. That's because I'm going to lift that back knee up and press hard into that back heel. Again, I'm going to encourage you to do this oriented towards the, the screen so you can see what's going on. So you have a nice long stride between your feet. You're going to bring both hands to the inside arch side of that front foot. You're going to take that back heel, drop it in and down. And begin to bow your head, look through your legs, see what's going on behind you. Bow your legs, look through your legs, see what's going on behind you. Let the front knee bend even more. And then release. Gonna walk both hands all the way around to the other foot. We're going to set up and do the same thing on the other side. So first, start by going long. you got your left foot forward, your right foot back. You're pressing hard through that right heel, feeling a bit of a calf muscle stretch. And then both hands come to the inside arch side of that front foot. You're going to start to drop that back heel in and down. So one leg is straight, one leg is bent. Then you're going to bow forward, look through your legs, stick out your booty. Don't be shy. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> look through your legs. See what's going on behind you. And then release. All right. Pivot all the way around to the other side. So now you have your right foot forward, your left foot back. You're going to press hard into that back heel. Feel that calf muscle stretch. And then pivot that back heel in and down. Both hands come to the inside arch side of that front foot. And you're going to bow forward, dropping your head towards the ground. The trick to getting your head closer to the ground is to flip your buns up towards the sun. The more you can salute the sun with your buns, the more your head will drop down towards the ground. So press your inner thighs back, stick your booty up into the sky, and let your head drop down. And then straighten up. Walk all the way over to the other side. So walk your hands all the way over to the other side. Same thing. Start by pressing hard through that back heel so you feel the calf muscle stretch first. Don't cheat yourself out of that calf muscle stretch. And then pivot that back heel in and down. Both feet solidly planted on the ground. You're going to bow forward on the inside of that bent knee, dropping your head. 
Flipping your buns up towards the sun. Press your inner thighs back, and big old booty. Let your head drop down towards the floor. And then straighten it. Walk both hands to the middle of your mat. Find yourself in a wide-legged forward fold and adjust your feet so your toes turn in or heels press out and you bow forward. Holding your head to send it down towards the ground. Knees unlocked. Keeping a slight bend to your knees, flip your bones up towards the sun. Let your heels flare out wide. Inner thighs press back and apart. Remember that cake mixer thing? Inner thighs pressing back behind you. And then come back up. It is time for a downward facing dog. Hands stretch out in front of you. Legs come narrow, as wide apart as the mat. Fingers spread wide. Hang your head, shake out your hair, wiggle your jaw, and begin to dance your hips from side to side, pedaling your feet. Bend one knee, then the other. Do a little cha-cha-cha. Shift your hips wide from side to side. As you do so, think about reaching back with your inner heel. So as you pedal your feet, pick up one foot, then the other. As you go to press that heel down, press the inner heel back. Inner heel back. Always flaring those sit bones. Always pressing your inner thighs back and apart. Fingers are spread wide. Elbows are unlocked. And you're trying to rotate your arms in such a way that you are showing me your elbow pits. The points of your elbows pivot down towards the ground. The pits of your elbows turn towards the front edge of your mat. You can only get that arm rotation happening if your elbows are unlocked. And then come to neutral. And all the way back down to hands and knees. Curl your, untuck your toes. Big toes together, knees apart. Back your hips up onto your heels for your child's pose. Now from child's pose, fingers spread wide, even turn out to the sides a little bit. So you can pivot your elbow pits. Show me your veins, your elbow pits face forward. Points of your elbows are gonna unlock and bend down towards the ground. Come on up to hands and knees, curl your toes under, unlock your elbows, squeeze your elbows in narrow. Flare your fingers out a little bit wider and press the knuckles down into the mat. Fingertips grip the mat and your knuckles press into the mat as well. And then power your hips back. From here, clawing at the mat, pressing your knuckles into the mat, keeping a slight bend in your elbows, swinging those elbows in narrow. The points of your elbows point towards the floor. Feel your upper back engaged. Again, with an inhale. Exhale, belly strong, rise up on the tippy toes. You can walk, step, or jump. Hippity hop towards the front edge of your mat. Hang your head. Bend your knees, and with a reverse swan dive, inhale, come all the way up to standing. And exhale, release arms down to your sides. Turn your palms forward, take a great big shoulder shrug, inhale up. And exhale, back and down. You're going to step your feet wide. Good. Take your feet as wide apart as your outstretched arms, so your ankles are underneath your wrists. Turn your right toes to the right. Turn your left toes to the right. All 10 toes going to the right. Drop your shoulders back and down away from your ears. Big inhale, arms come all the way up. And as you exhale, pull your tummy in like you're getting tickled. Lower your arms level with your shoulders and let that right knee glide into your warrior two. Let your left hand come to rest lightly on your thigh. Flip that right palm up and reach for the sky. Lift your ribs out of your hips, get the side of your waist nice and long, and then reverse your warrior two. A nice deep breath here. And 
And then with an inhale, come all the way up, pulling the front leg straight, lengthening out, reaching out over the front leg. The front knee is unlocked, slightly bent. Hand comes to rest lightly on your shin. Top hand towards the sky, palm turns forward like you're high-fiving somebody. And like you are high-fiving somebody, brace your core, high-five, smack that top hand into an imaginary friend. Pull your tummy in and turn your chest open a little bit more. Don't forget, raise your hand if you like yoga. Keep on breathing. And then take that top hand and pull yourself all the way up and release. Let's pivot the feet to go the other direction. So spin your toes all the way out as far as they can go to the other side. The left toes pointing to the left, right toes pointing to the left, all 10 toes pointing towards the left. Big inhale, arms all the way up. And exhale, arms level with the shoulders, palms turn down and let that left knee bend, gliding into your warrior two. Ideally, your chest is centered directly over your hips. So your spine is straight up and down on this one. Right hand rests on your thigh, flip your left palm up, reach up, straight up, and then reverse your warrior two. Nice deep breath here. And then with belly strong, slowly start to pull the front leg straight, tipping over, let your left hand rest lightly on your shin, right arm raises the roof. High five that imaginary friend, activate your abs, turn your chest open, keep on breathing. And with an inhale, come all the way up and really turn your toes in. Put a bend to your knees. Hands over, inner thighs back, sit bones spread, heels press wide as you hinge over. Giving a good strong stretch on the backs of your legs, letting your head hang heavy. For a little bit more stretch, you can bring your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, clasp your hands together, press your knuckles up towards the sky. And then the hands come to your hips and slide down your legs all the way down to the ground. Now pull your belly up first and walk your hands up your lap, pulling everything else up second and all the way up to standing. All right, you're gonna heel toe wiggle your feet a little closer to each other. Make sure you have all your toys nearby because you're gonna cop a squat. And some of us need toys for the squat to work out. So lots of modifications this morning. Option number one is just to come on down into a squat. Now, when you come into a squat, pretend you're having a day at the beach and you're using the public restroom at the beach. Ladies, we've all been there, where you want to kind of hover. Put all your weight back in your heels. Be able to pick up your, wiggle your toes. Your weight is back in your heels as you come on down to that squat. Now, if squatting doesn't work for you, there's ways you can modify. If it's a little too much on the knees, you can stack up your blocks and maybe take a little bit of the load off. Sit on those blocks, put your sit bones on the blocks, maybe make this a little bit more comfortable. It also might help to take your feet wider apart. Do make sure your toes and knees are pointing in the same direction. Your toes and knees pointing off in the same direction. Other modifications you can make if your ankles, your heels don't reach the floor, you can use a rolled up uh, sticky mat, a folded blanket, two separate couch cushions, whatever and put a little something underneath your heels so that your heels are resting on support. You want your heels to make contact. Other ways to play around with this, if none of those modifications work for you, you can just bail out and do a happy baby, which looks like this. So choose your own adventure on this one. You can be able to walk afterwards. Some of you might want to do a happy baby. If you are working that squat, 
and your ankles aren't completely 100% happy, here's the trick. You bring your hands together. You drive your hands down midline so your elbows press into your knees and then squeeze your knees against your elbows. Elbows are pressing out, knees are squeezing in and your ankles won't hurt so much. If you're in that happy baby, you can start rocking from side to side. If you are in the squat and it's tolerable and you wanna play around with it a little bit more, you might rock from side to side. Press one knee wide and press the other knee wide. Shift from side to side. Maybe play around with pivoting your toes out a little bit more. Squatting is a really good stretch of the Achilles tendon, which runs from the calf to the back of the heel. Sometimes those Achilles tendons are very, very tight because we spend most of our time wearing high heels. Even sneakers have a bit of a heel. Spend a lot of time wearing heels of one sort or another, and those Achilles tendons can get quite short. And if your Achilles tendons are short, they do not let your ankle bend, which will also limit your ability to bend your knees and balance your weight when you do things like squat. It's not uncommon for tight Achilles tendons to contribute to knee pain when you do your squats and lunges. All right. From here, I'm gonna come on down to the ground and do make sure you have all your toys nearby because we're gonna work on putting our feet behind our heads or just enjoying the show as you watch me try to put a foot behind my head. So speaking of putting foot behind your head, if your head does not comfortably rest on the floor, then put a pillow underneath your head. How can you tell if your head is comfortable on the floor? If your chin is higher than your nose, you probably need a pillow. If swallowing is uncomfortable or difficult or it feels choky, then you probably need a pillow. So do make yourself comfortable. We did a little bit of neck stretching, so hopefully maybe you don't need a whole lot of pillow underneath your head. You've got your blocks, you got your belt nearby, everything is easily accessible. And you're gonna put your knees bent, feet flat on the ground. Turn your toes in, let your knees lean together. Take your hands down low to your bikini. Let your fingertips touch your pubic bone so the palms of your hands rest on that pooch between your hip bones. And then you're gonna use your fingertips, use the palms of your hands to stroke from pubic bone up over the bladder up towards your waistband. So you begin with an inhale, let your belly pooch out. And as you exhale, scoop in, hollow out, sweep up. And inhale, come to neutral. And exhale, scoop in. And inhale, come to neutral. Can you scoop without squeezing your butt? Try that again. Exhale, scoop in without squeezing your butt. And one more time. Exhale, scoop in without squeezing your butt. So if you poke it, it should jiggle. You're gonna heel toe wiggle your feet a little closer to each other. You're trying to maintain this pelvic thrust tilt with your hips. So a little bit more of your lower back and waistband is on the ground than normal. You're gonna bring that right knee into your chest. Interlace your fingers around that right shin. Shrug your shoulders away from your ears. You still have that scooped in belly. You're gonna take your left knee to your chest, flex both feet flat, take that left leg straight up towards the sky. Begin with an inhale. As you exhale, scoop in your belly. Maybe this right thigh comes heavier, deeper, tighter in against your ribs. One more time, inhale. Exhale, engage those abs and then begin to lower your left leg down towards the ground, maybe halfway. Hover in midair. Squeeze that left leg in towards the midline like you got a pee to engage that pelvic floor a little bit more so you can exhale, scoop your abs in a little bit more. And I'm leaving you there for two, three, maybe four breaths. Because after two or three or maybe four breaths, 
the psoas muscle on that left side begins to release. And maybe that left leg begins to descend down towards the ground. It won't touch. It begins to descend down towards the ground without your back disconnecting from the floor. You still have the same amount of lower back waistband touching the ground as you did a few breaths ago as that left leg begins to descend. We're releasing an internal hip flexor. Find your tummy. As you exhale, scoop it in, and then haul that left leg back on up. And let's switch sides. Interlace your fingers around that left shin. Both feet are flexed flat. Both knees are close to your chest. You're just holding on to the, the left leg. Exhale, scoop your belly and tuck your front ribs and nestle that left thigh in against your ribs a little bit more. Now your right leg, raise the roof. Begin with an inhale. Exhale, make sure your abs are strong. Nothing's going to change in your torso as you allow that right leg to descend down about halfway and it squeezes in towards midline like you're doing this wearing a short skirt. Try to preserve your modesty. Imagine doing this on camera. <laughs> All right, keep breathing. You relax your shoulders, relax your neck, relax your jaw. And again, after two, three, or four breaths, that psoas muscle begins to release. Nothing changes in your torso. You still have just as much lower back waist contact with the ground as you did a few breaths ago. But maybe that right leg to descend down towards the ground a little bit more. It won't touch the floor. It's going to hover off the mat. And exhale, belly strong. Bring that all the way back up. Good. Take those knees in close to your body. Let your knees go wide. Put the bottoms of your feet together. Take some nice deep belly breaths. Balloon your belly out to pry your thighs apart. and transfer both hands over to your right foot. Take your left leg straight up. You're holding on to just the right foot. Again, with an inhale. As you exhale, pull your belly in. Let everything come in a little closer to your chest. Okay. And then bend that left knee, set the left foot flat down on the floor. Got a good grip on this right foot. The foot is flexed flat to protect the ankle. I'm holding on with both hands to the pinky toe side of the foot. From here, I'm going to begin with an inhale. And then when I exhale, I'm going to push my foot diagonal to the upper left. So this is my right foot. I'm going to push my foot to the upper left. It's going to go out and across my body. And I'm going to use the strength of my arms to haul that leg back in. I'm going to exhale, kick out. Inhale, pull back in. And I'm using my arms. I exhale, kick out. Inhale, pull back in. Exhale, kick out. Inhale, pull back in. So I'm sawing this leg back and forth. And each and every time, maybe my knee comes a little closer to the ground. Not because I'm falling over to the side, it's because the hip is loosening up. But I still have all my lower back, back waistband on the ground. That's what that ab thing was all about, was getting a sense of your lower back and waistband. Because you want that lower back and waistband on the floor. We're not rocking from side to side. We're just sawing the leg back and forth. And then finally, pull it all the way in. You've got a good grip on that foot. Bring the toe towards your nose. But leave your head down on the ground. Toe comes up over your nose. And release. Oh. Take a moment to jiggle the leg. Maybe take a moment to stretch out nice and flat. 
suntan like Superman. <sighs> Feel the blood flowing back into your hip. <sighs> And then snow angel your hands down by your hips and let's set up and do the other side. So knees bent, feet flat. Bring one knee at a time, both knees into your chest. Rock from side to side. You really wanna spread your back out on the ground. You know, suction cup your back to the ground. It's not going anywhere in just a moment. Bottoms of your feet come together. Hold around the pinky toe sides of your feet. Big belly breaths. Notice the difference on the two sides. And then transfer both hands over to your left foot and you can shoot your right leg high to the sky. And just holding on to the left foot, big inhale. Exhale, and let your right knee bend, right foot comes to the ground. This left leg is still in tight close to your chest. Got a good grip on the foot. The foot is flexed flat to protect the ankle. And then you're going to kick out opposite diagonal corner and then pull it back down. Try to limit the movement to the leg and the arms. You are not rocking from side to side. You're just kicking out and pulling in. And use your arms. Kick out hard, pull in hard. Start easing that big toe over your nose. Head stays down. And then finally ease that big toe over your nose. If you can bring your toes to your nose. And release. And once again, sun tan like Superman. That was all warm up. <sighs> Let's take a moment to stretch out, full out, flat out. Let the blood flow back into your hips. Now we're gonna repeat that. The second time around, you might get a little bit closer. So reset, you're gonna come back to neutral, set one foot down, set both feet down, bring one knee at a time, both knees into your chest. Rock a little bit from side to side, really spread your backside out on the mat. And then put the bottom of your feet together, come into that Baddha Konasana, holding onto your feet. Maybe rock a little bit from side to side, really spread your backside out on the ground. Big belly breaths. Then both hands come over to your right foot. Left leg goes straight. <sighs> Exhale, bring everything in a little closer to your chest. Keep it in nice and tight and close as you set that left foot back down. Inhale, exhale, kick out. Inhale, pull in. Exhale, kick out. Inhale, pull in. Exhale, kick out. Inhale, pull in. Watch out for small children. Oh, hi. Can you put your foot behind your head, honey? No. Come on, I bet you can. Because that's what we're going to do. You're going to pull that foot over your nose. Big breath into your chest. Exhale, pull your tummy in. Lift your head and shoulders up. Maybe bring that big toe towards your third eye on your forehead. Maybe release that right hand and hook it underneath and around to the outside of the foot. Maybe putting the arch of your foot on the crown of your head. Belly still pulled in. Still lots of your lower back on the ground. Some of you might be able to exhale, lift your head and shoulders up. Maybe hook your right hand around the backside of the ankle 
and work more of your shoulder around the leg. Some of you might be able to put that foot behind your head. Not me, but maybe one of you. Some of you might get a good grip on that foot, but that foot hook behind your head and now your left leg gets free. So take a big inhale and exhale. Let that left leg start to swing, start to swing, start to swing, and maybe rock all the way up to sit with that foot behind your head. Not me, but maybe one of you. And come into this seated pose with a foot behind your head. Not me. Not on this side, not today. But I tried. And then go ahead, release. Oh. Don't be shy about doing the other side. The other side is your left side. Usually your left side is a little bit more flexible, a little less muscular, a little bit more flexible. Don't be shy about trying the other side. Well, that's how we're gonna lie back down. Can you do it? Can you put your foot behind your head? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, bend your knees, knees bent, feet flat. Bring one knee at a time, both knees into your chest. Happy baby, or actually, Supta Baddha Konasana. Hold on to the bottoms of your feet. Bring those toes in over your belly. Take some nice deep belly breaths. Both hands over to the left foot. Right leg goes straight up. Exhale, bring everything in a little bit closer. And then set the right foot down. Lots of your back on the ground. Good grip on that foot. The foot is flexed flat. Begin with an inhale. Exhale, kick it out. Inhale, pull it in. Exhale, kick it out. Inhale, pull it in. When you inhale, pull it in, your chest is broad and flat. Your shoulders are down. Exhale, wide chest. Inhale, kick out. Oh, sorry, exhale, kick out. Inhale, pull in. Exhale, kick out. Inhale, pull in. And now, inhale, lift your head and shoulders up. Try bringing that big toe to your third eye. Exhale, pull in, lift up. Maybe put the arch of your foot on the curve of your forehead. Some of you might take that left arm, hook it underneath and around the outside of the foot. Your fingers kind of hook around that ankle and you might be able to shove that foot behind your head. Not me, but maybe you. Try getting as much foot behind your head, much leg behind your shoulder as you can. And then when you've had enough of that, you can play around trying to sit up. Take that right leg, swing it. Rock and roll up to sit. And maybe you find yourself sitting upright with that foot behind your head. I wish you all had your cameras on. <laughs> Try it. And then release. Oh, take a nice long stretch. Once again, you get to lie down, sun tan like Superman. Reach through your fingers, reach through your toes. A nice long full body stretch. I've been doing a lot of Zumba and belly dance lately, and it really tightens up my hips in such a way that I'm not putting my foot behind my head today. <sighs> All right, snow angel your hands down by your hips. Bend one knee at a time, put both feet flat. Let your feet go as wide apart as your mat. Let your knees tick tock side to side like windshield wipers. This is to make nice with your lower back. That was an intense forward fold, in case you didn't notice. It's gonna help neutralize that lower back with some. Gentle windshield wiping, lower body twisting. Mm. 
And then come to neutral heel toe, wiggle your feet and narrow. Now, if you got a block, use it. Tuck it between your knees. So it's a narrow brick between your knees. And you're going to give that block a good hard squeeze with your knees, not your butt. And relax. Try that again. Exhale, squeeze with your knees, not your butt. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze with your knees, not your butt. And release. If you want to throw in that pelvic thrust tilt, that scooped in belly, go for it. Exhale, squeeze with your knees. Pelvic thrust tilt, scooped in belly. And release. Try doing it with your thighs and your abs, not your butt. Exhale, squeeze. And release. All right. You can keep squeezing and releasing. Throw in some kegel. If you know how to do some kegel moves, go for it. If you have a second block nearby, you might consider exhaling, squeezing with your knees, pelvic thrust, lift your hips up and tuck that brick underneath your bottom. Maybe on the low height, maybe on the medium height. And just come into a supported bridge. We're doing the supported bridge to kind of put your back to neutral. You did a dramatic forward hold we did a little neutralizing side to side knee twist. And now we're doing a gentle supported back bend. To help put your back together. Keep squeezing the brick with your knees. Exhale, squeeze the brick, pelvic thrust, lift your hips up, remove the block, set your hips back down. Don't drop the brick between your knees. Keep squeezing with your knees. And then remove the block between your knees. You have one, maybe two blocks. I'm assuming everybody's got one or a stack of bricks or something. At least one block will go underneath your butt on a low level. If you've got two blocks, you can put one block underneath each butt cheek and what I call butt cheek configuration, one block for each cheek. Give a nice broad, wide, flat support for your backside. Squeeze your knees together as if you still had a brick between them. Exhale, pelvic thrust tilt, keep your belly and lift your hips up and tuck those bricks underneath your bottom on that low level height. Even if you're super flexible and totally awesome, do the low level height. Because I'm going somewhere that you probably weren't expecting. All right, so again, we're in a supported bridge pose. Legs are narrow, abs are engaged, scooped in your belly, pelvic thrust tilt. And now you're going to press out through your right heel. Press out through that right heel like you're pushing your foot against the brakes. Pressing through the heel, flaring the toes like we did at the beginning of class. And feel the front of that right hip yawn open. Keep scooping your belly in. One more nice deep breath here. Scoop your belly in, bring that right leg back in. Squeeze your knees, exhale, pelvic thrust tilt, scoop your belly in, and then press out through your left heel. Toes are flared, footprint flat against the opposite wall. Not letting the front of that left hip yawn open. Inhale, 
exhale, pull your tummy in, and then bring that left leg back in. Knees bent, feet flat, squeeze your knees together. Exhale, pelvic thrust, lift your hips up, remove the blocks, set your bottom down. You can stay here, widen your feet, turn your toes in, let your knees lean together. Maybe even tie your thighs together for a half Shavasana, Ardha Shavasana, constructive rest pose. Or if it appeals to you, you have the option of stretching your legs out nice and long. Shrug your shoulders underneath you. Shake your head no, wiggle your jaw. Baby, baby, yawn. And let your breath come slowly in and out through your nose.
Please begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Wiggle your jaw, wiggle your nose. Maybe even yawn. Make your way slowly over onto your right side. And from there, using your hands on the ground, press yourself up to sit. Sit any way you like. And finish with hands together at the heart. And with a word that can be used in farewell or in greeting, as a sign of acknowledgement and respect. Namaste. And thank you for coming. <laughs>